The Hobbit, the first part of The Hobbit, is very interesting. Lord of the Rings, there was, was three parts to the movie. The books are this big, The Hobbit's that big, and it's two parts. I think uh, the, the, um, the answer to that is they make lots of money. But that's, that's, that's wonderful, because I enjoyed the Lord of the Rings movies very much. The Hobbit, the first part, opens in about a week or so. It should be terrific. It's, it's taken over all of New Zealand, but then that's not that difficult. The author... Tolkien, what was he really like? And over the years, people have tried to, to make him their own as, as a man of the left, an environmentalist. I mean, he, he was a, a conservative man, a devoutly and deeply Catholic man, and a very good man, too. I wrote a sort of introductory life of him a few years ago, but there's a wonderful book, book written by him by, by Joseph Pierce, who's a professor at Thomas More College in New Hampshire. He's written many wonderful books. He joins us now by Skype. Welcome to you, sir. Oh, it's good to be here. Now... Uh, he died in, the, in the, the early 70s, so quite a few people around who knew him. But wh what do we know of Tolkien? What sort of a man was he? Well, he was a lifelong practicing Catholic um, and an academic at Oxford University, um, an expert in his field of uh, old English literature, uh, and obviously best known to the world as the writer of uh, The Lord of the Rings, which has been voted the greatest work of the 20th century, and, of course, also The Hobbit, which preceded that, which is now, as, as, you, as you say, the... Uh, the first of the three Hobbit movies is about to be released by, by Peter Jackson. Is, oh, is it three? I thought it was two. No, it's three. Oh, my golly, three? <laughs> well, how I, do know, they... I know, I know. <laughs> I, I hate to think what extra things are going to be put into it. Yeah, you wonder, because it's not that big a book. Now, I, I mentioned in the introduction that over the years, particularly, I think, in, in the United States, but everywhere, uh, fans have tried to, to make Tolkien their own. And, but... This idea that he was uh, an environmentalist or he was a man of the left, that's not really the real author, is it? No, to, 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 to uh, imply that the Lord of the Rings somehow is, is pursuing uh, an environmentalist uh, position or uh, a left-wing position is to misunderstand the book. Tolkien himself said about the Lord of the Rings explicitly, and I'm quoting him word for word here, the Lord of the Rings is, of course, a fundamentally religious and Catholic work. So to, 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 to see or read The Lord of the Rings in any way other than that is, quite frankly, not to see it at all. Mm -hmm. There are Also, there have been some people who, who have implied that he was a figure of, of the hard right and said that, uh, that, that there are elements of racism or fascism, which I have never seen, and on a personal level. I mean, he, uh, there's an anecdote when a German publisher uh, approached him and asked if he was an Aryan, and he wrote back and said, you have no idea what that word means. If, however, you're, you're asking, do I have any Jewish blood, sadly, I don't. Exactly, exactly. I know, and you look at the, the Tolkien's... The political philosophy of The Lord of the Rings is, is much more in line with the subsidiarity of the Catholic Church, the idea of small government, the idea of big centralized technological government being undemocratic and, and tyrannical. I mean, this is the antithesis of big government fascism as much as it's in it, the antithesis of big government socialism. Mm -hmm. Now, he did... Uh, people often wonder when he, when he lived. I mean, he lived a, a good and long life, but he died relatively recently. Yes, he, he, he died in the 1970s. He was around long enough to, uh, to see what the, the debacles of the 20th century. He fought in the First World War and what he called the animal horror of the Battle of the Somme. And he also, of course, experienced the Second World War and, and the animal horror of that war and the, and the genocide and the atom bomb and, and everything else. So, you know, he, he, he lived in our times, and that's where the Lord of the Rings, although it's set, you know, thousands of years ago, is, 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 it palpitates with, with uh, issues that are relevant to the, to the age in which we live. Mm -hmm. now, he was, at least for part of his life, close friends with C.S. Lewis, who wrote... Most people will know the Narnia stories, but many other works of Christian apologetics and explanation. And he's another man who has deeply influenced the culture and continues to do so and sell huge numbers of copies of books. Well, one thing I find very encouraging in the 21st century is that 50 years or so after the death of these two men, they're selling more copies of their books now than they were during their own lifetime. Yeah. And even during their own lifetime, they were very popular, but they're just uh, enormously popular now. It's really more... The, the correct word is to talk about a, a, a C.S. Lewis industry mm. and a J.R.R. Tolkien industry. And as these men are profoundly conservative in the best sense of that word and, and profoundly Christian, this has to be encouraging news for our times. Well, it, it is. But how, I suppose, paradoxical that a Hollywood that wears on its sleeve its social liberalism and its secularism is promoting this enormous set of movies. So in the end, there will be six movies uh, from Tolkien's books and all the spin-offs and the special editions. But he and Lewis, the Narnia movies, were both deeply Christian men. Lewis 
wasn't a Catholic, but if you speak to people who knew him well, he died in 63. He, was on the, he, he would have been. He was very close to becoming one. These are men who are deeply conservative in the best sense of the word and, and, and deeply Christian. So do, uh, Hollywood must be aware of this. They just, what, keep quiet about it? Well, yes, I think that it's, it's the embarrassing silence. But the point is with Hollywood, as you know, what trumps everything else is making the megabucks. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, the Lord of the Rings films have made megabucks. The Narnia films are doing very well. So, you know, uh, that for them is, 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 is going to trump everything else. And they'll sort of try to brush the, the, the conservative Christian dimension under the carpet as far as possible. But you can't, insofar as you stick to the story, <laughs> you know, that, 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 that element is, go is going to be there and present. Mm -hmm. Now, quite a few people have tried to replicate in some way Lewis and in particular Tolkien. And every time you read them, you realize there's only one Tolkien. It's never really worked properly, has it? No, I mean, we, we, they're, they're pale by comparison. You know, even the best efforts are not the masterwork that The Lord of the Rings is. But, but, quite, but quite frankly, Michael, you know, The Lord of the Rings has been voted the greatest work of the 20th century in, in several opinion polls. I concur with that opinion. It's a major work of literature, you know, and major writers of the caliber of J.R. Tolkien don't come, up, don't come along every day. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, have you seen the movie yet, by the way, The Hobbit movie? No, I haven't. I shall be doing the same as everybody else and going there on the opening night. Yeah, I, I, I will too. Do you have any concerns? Oh, yes. Um, one of them is connected to what you've just said. Uh, you know, three movies for a book that's one-third the length of The Lord of the Rings suggest that, you know, that at least half of the material is going to be additional material that's not in The Hobbit at all. And that's what worries me, because what uh, you know, Peter Jackson and the producers of the film are going to do with the, uh, the additional material, what, what's that going to do to actually pollute, distort you know, the profoundly uh, Christian uh, meaning of The Hobbit? And it is a profoundly Christian work. Mm -hmm. Well, we've heard apparently that there is a, a gay, atheist, transgendered figure who comes in at the end to save the day, but I'm sure that won't be a problem <laughs> in any way. <laughs> Well, I, 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 hope, I hope things won't be quite that bad, but, but who knows these days? Who knows? No, I th you know, uh, for all of Hollywood's problems, I think Jackson is a pretty good guy. And, the, yeah, there may be some additions, but I have a feeling they won't be too interested. Well, the thing, the, the thing about Peter Jackson from the experience of the Lord of the Rings movies is, although he's not a Christian himself, he clearly loves the Lord of the Rings, and he clearly respects the fact that Tolkien was a Christian. Yeah. And there were elements of those films, particularly the depiction of Galadriel, you know, when she's given the gift, that reminds us of an icon of the Blessed Virgin. And there were, so that he, he was aware of the Christian dimension, and even some of it present in the films. So I'm hoping that what was true of the Lord of the Rings uh, films will also be true of, of, of the new Hobbit films. Yeah, I agree. I can't wait. Terrific stuff. Thanks so very much indeed, my friend. Thanks, Michael. God bless you.